I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank. Come and tell me half at saltwateraquarium.com. There's macro cleanup crew members, the big guys, snails, shrimps, crabs, starfish, and then there's micro cleanup crew members, the little shrimp-like creatures that cruise around your tank, get the nooks and crannies that the big guys can't get to, and that can also serve as a viable food source for certain types of fish. These micro cleanup crew members are copepods and amphipods, or pods for short. Both copepods and amphipods are invertebrates that look like fleas or tiny shrimp. Copepods are very small, and while you can see them with your naked eye, all you're going to see is a speck moving around. Amphipods are much larger and may scare those of you that don't like creepy crawly things like my tank buddy Jack. Here at saltwaterquarium.com, we sell pods from Reef Nutrition, which are known to be the best in the industry. And we've got three choices for you. Arctopods, which aren't alive, you feed them to your tank as a treat for your fish. Now, tigger pods are alive, but they're not going to repopulate in your tank. Not a problem, though. You feed them as a treat to your fish. Some of them are going to scurry about on your rocks and feed those fish at the bottom of your tank like mandarins. Last but not least, Apex pods. These guys will repopulate in your tank and note that they're not refrigerated. Now we may ship them to you in a refrigerated container to keep them alive during those hot summer months. But they will repopulate in your tank. If you want to do that, ideally you're going to boost your tank up with a little bit of phytoplankton. We'll talk about that in just a second, but if you like all these pods, you really want to spoil your fish and seed your tank for the long term, you can buy these as a pod pack. For those of you that have just started your saltwater tank or don't have a lot of fish in your saltwater tank, I recommend you establish that pod population before you add a lot of fish. This way the pods have a chance to get established, to get reproducing, before they get hunted down by fish. Now a word of caution here, not every fish is going to eat pods. For example, at saltwatercorner.com 700, we've got a couple tangs, one fox face, and a pair of Bengay cardinal fish. These fish are going to eat an amphipod if it happens to get caught in the water column, but they're not going to pick around the rocks and actively hunt copepods. Copepod hunters include leopard wrasses, mandarins, scooter dragonettes. Those are those guys that are going to mow down your pod population. So you want to get as many pods established before you put those types of fish in your tank. Now, speaking from experience, my old 235 gallon tank, once I got wiped out by marine velvet, again, quarantine all your fish, I dosed the pods into the tank before I put any fish into the tank. I had a huge pod population in that tank. I could see them crawling all over the glass. It was like a mini ant farm or flea farm. There were all these little white specks crawling all over the tank. Once I put a leopard wrasse in that tank though, within days I couldn't see any pods with my eyes. Now that didn't mean I didn't have any pods in the tank. They were still cruising around the rocks and little crevices that I couldn't see. But the bid pod population numbers were gone because those fish had hunted them down. A refugium is a great place to grow your pod population. It's very likely there's not going to be any fish in your refugium, therefore there's no natural predators of those pods. Your pod population can run wild, literally explode in front of your eyes, then you can take the rubble out of your refugium and put it into your display tank to boost up the pod population of your display tank. That's exactly what we're doing here at saltwateraquarium.com with our display refugium. We're going to have rubble in here, we're going to dose this thing with pods, let the pod population go crazy, and then use that rubble to put into our display tank to seed and boost up the pod population of the saltwateraquarium.com 700. Some of you may be wondering, what about the pods that get swept into the overflow, make it into the sump? Those pods are very likely going to get stuck in the filter socks and then make it into the return line and then go back into the display. Not a problem though, we'll use that rubble to seed the display, boost up the pod population whenever we want. If you don't have a refugium to seed your display tank pod population, no worries, you can always dose pods regularly into your tank. Whenever you dose pods into your tank, I recommend you do it at night once the lights are off. That way your fish don't eat them all before they have a chance to make it to the rocks. And I recommend you turn off your return pump and all your power heads because no pod is going to swim against the current of a power head to reach the rocks. Dosing liquid phytoplankton into your tank is going to help grow your pod population, but if you have a nutrient problem, don't dose phyto. It's only going to make your nutrient problem worse. Copepods and amphipods are great members of your cleanup crew and they're good for your tank as well. If you're not growing your own pod population, I recommend dosing your tank regularly, like once a month, to help boost up your pod population. I do that with my own display, and it helps my tank look great. And for the fish that eat the pods, they're going to thank you as well. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. 
I'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.